I guess uh, maybe I'll start. Uh, hey, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm very happy to uh, be here in, in Denver. Uh, I've, I've had a, a great time here, I don't know about you. Um, I'm kind of wondering, like, just to take the pulse of the room, how, how many people are currently actively and primarily concerned with uh, D6 sites that they're running in WYSIWYG? Yeah. Uh, seven? Eight? <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Andrew Malice, and uh, I'm a consultant. I freelance. Uh, I'm a bit of a paratrooper. I, I jump in uh, various situations, try and put out fires, um, save the day, uh, hopefully maybe save the world a little bit. I am uh, currently actively engaged with um, uh, Occupy Wall Street and a, a large project that we're running here, you may have heard about, uh, called uh, the Federated General Assembly, and I also uh, support the uh, tech out of New York City. Um, I also uh, do nonprofit work primarily for uh, small um, organizations, and uh, I am very concerned with usability and uh, providing them with an experience that allows them to feel comfortable editing content on their website, which is why I've spent so long trying to figure out this whole WYSIWYG thing. Um, so. I'm going to kind of motor through some of these slides and then jump into a demo site, show you some configurations, because um, I think that's probably what is most useful, and leave uh, plenty of time for questions. Um, so I'm kind of thinking, you know, in, in this whole uh, spectrum that, you know, we've all got some sites and we already have WYSIWYG and something's not working. Like, we kind of want to make it better. So. Um, I'm going to outline some modules that you can use and uh, also um, some key concepts as you're going through the config to try and think about you know, how you want to approach different problems and also different use cases because every site's a little different. It's not like you can install something, turn it on, and it's going to work in every situation. Um, so uh, there is a Google Doc uh, that I'm running, constantly updating. Um, because uh, it's, it's kind of some of these things are moving targets. Um, if you follow through the steps, there's like a table of contents. You can jump right to your pain points and try and address you know, a particular piece, be it image handling, text, uh, et cetera. Uh, and, and I'm going to be going through uh, some, of those, some of those pieces as well. Um, but uh, you, know, you don't need to take furious notes because it's all there. And um, also, there's a, a distro um, that you can download to see how all this is going to be working. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. All right. So, uh, what what is uh, what is Wiggy, WYSIWYG? Um, basically, you know, you have something in mind, and you put it in there. This is what you want. You press save, and then this is what you get. <laughs> So what do we do? How do we solve this problem? Like most things in Drupal, lots of modules. But don't worry. It's not as bad as you think if you just kind of go through things. Chances are you probably have a half of these modules already installed on your site. And um, depending on your use case, you, know, you, you might not need to go through all of this. Um, so I have a couple different lists of sections. Again, these slides will be available for download and all of these hot link to the module pages for you. Uh, WYSIWYG, obviously, uh, that's what we're all here talking about. But um, in case you may be on the fence around using a dedicated module, like, uh, I don't know, the CK editor or module, I would highly recommend that you use WYSIWYG and the WYSIWYG API, uh, mainly because you won't be able to do some of the tricks that I'm going to show you later. And um, also because it's, you know, uh, uh, well, it's just so much better. I mean, you can use multiple WYSIWYGs for different text areas, and it's awesome. Uh, WYSIWYG filter allows you to sanitize the, the uh, input, 
that people put in. So if someone accidentally like pastes some code in there that you don't like, gone. With a lot more control than you can in the standard um, uh, fields. Um, better formats. Uh, most of this is rolled into core now in Drupal 7, but uh, if you're still on Drupal 6, I highly recommend that you install this module because it allows you to configure, you know, per content type, what input formats, input filters you're going to be using, um, so so that uh, um, you know you can maybe on a page or on a blog, you know, you want to add some additional stuff. Um, you know, you have a particular content type. It allows you a lot of control and control per user as well, which is fantastic and something we're going to get into a little bit. Uh, more. Um, so uh, file field sources, insert, image resize filter, these are all amazing modules uh, and uh, uh, Nate Quick Sketch has is, is, is done a great, a great job, um, you know, uh, putting, putting these together and, and they, they work fabulously and will solve a lot of your problems, especially if you're dealing with inline images, uh, which we'll, we'll talk a bit about. Um, File field sources, insert, you know, I'm going to demo these so I, I, I'll, uh, it'll make a lot more sense if I just kind of show you how they work if you don't already know. And uh, IMCE, um, I actually kind of do advocate for. Uh, a lot of um, people think it's, you know, kind of, it can be dangerous, don't get me wrong, but um, I'll, I'll show you how to put some guardrails in place so that people aren't, uh, you know, chopping things up on your server. Uh, if you're in six, Image cache and iTweak uploader are, are, are pretty nifty. Uh, image cache is certainly necessary for everything. Um, now, uh, paths are a really big issue in my view. Like, I like a nice clean file system. I like to know where things are going. I like to ensure that, you know, I can permission things appropriately. And um, uh, also, I want to make sure that when p people are uploading images, if they have strange characters in them, that I can strip them out and, you know, they're not going to look fine on the node edit form and then get broken links later on. Um, so for that, you know, use a combination of these modules. And uh, Pathologic, which is uh, also maybe a lesser known uh, module, it allows you to uh, dynamically rewrite image uh, URLs that are inside the body field. So like if you are on your staging site and you upload an image, then you go and push it production. Uh, suddenly, you know, your image links um, break because maybe, I don't know, or it was on local and, you know, you can't connect. Um, so what it does, it'll, it'll rewrite that. Um, it's kind of nifty. Great for migrations, great for moving between, uh, between places, and also for creating, like, uh, um, URLs that are relative instead of absolute, which you tend to get quite a bit. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you're creating, like, say you were starting from scratch, or maybe you already have a configuration. Um, I advocate, you know, having two different text formats or input formats if you're in Drupal 6. And uh, I, a lot of people seem to call those WYSIWYG, which, you know, is, I find confusing for a lot of editors, especially in nonprofits. They're, they just want to use, like, something that's a text editor, right? And you say WYSIWYG and then they have to learn all these terms and I just try to make it really friendly and approachable. So I make two input formats, one called text editor, and then the other is an advanced text editor, which includes some additional buttons and things because maybe you want um, certain people with certain privileges to be able to insert tables on your website, maybe, and uh, other people not. Um, so WYSIWYG filter, uh, this is a quick preview of the syntax, which can look a little scary, uh, but it's definitely worth studying. Uh, this allows you to filter out you know, certain types of code, and I'll show you how to configure that. And I've got a couple snippets in the Google Doc. You can just cut and paste right in, and it'll get you from like zero to 60 in about three seconds. Um, so this is different than what comes out of the box. And what this is basically saying is at the beginning, I'm gonna let some styles in here, um, some classes, and I'm gonna define what those are later. But um, like I can, for example, the little minus div, I'm gonna let a div get in there, but only if it's used to you know, align things. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna strip out any divs that are just there for the sake of it. Um, yeah, so not, not too much time to spend on that. We could probably spend about like 15 minutes talking about, about this stuff, but I, I think I'd rather, you know, give you guys a general overview um, and then we can get into details a little bit later. Uh, so this, this is kind of the magic. This is, this is the piece that I find like 
is the aha mo moment for a lot of people, like when they're working with their WYSIWYG config. And it's this little, little bit in the advanced rules section of your configurations where you define your CSS path. You have a couple options. You can use the default CSS that comes with your WYSIWYG editor, or you can set your theme CSS. And how many people have done that? And then they go to edit their node, and like the background has got like background images in it, or it's like an all terrible color. Yeah. And then you switch it back to the theme, and then you're like, oh well, you know my stuff's okay, but my whole site is using like sans serif fonts, and now I'm in the WYSIWYG editor, it's all serif, and I can't insert images properly. Or... So what we do is we like set some classes as well. And the syntax allows you to co have a correspondence between like some actual uh, legible names um, that appear in a dropdown in the WYSIWYG so people can select, hey, you know, I want to make this a section or an image. And then um, what happens is those actually get wrapped in block level formats with the class applied to them. So uh, for example, you want to float an image. Instead of inserting an image and then popping it up and then setting it here and then putting padding and you just put your you put your image in, inside the uh, WYSIWYG area, and then you s select a style, and then it'll wrap it in a div with a class of you know image left, which you can control in your CSS, and then you can cr control as well all of your margins so that you know your editors are not going in and putting inconsistent margin and padding around all of their images. Um, and I'm a big advocate for you know. Um, throw it, taking as, as much um, control, as much granular control in the editors as possible um, because in a way it, I think it, it, it gives, it gives more, more freedom to like worry about the content than try and like, you know, color text and everything like that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't color text, please. Um, if you, if your, if your people really want to have colored text, then, you know, Make it a class, because you know they're going to make the greens all different colors, and then you're going to have to you know, write some like, SQL statement to go and find all this stuff across like 4,000 nodes. And the CEO decides that the green needs to be lighter or whatever. Right? Um, all right, um, so then this, the other piece, the other piece of the puzzle is, uh, is taming, taming the CSS in the editor, right? Like, so the first, oh yeah, so this piece here, there's, this is really awkward. Um, you have to put like absolute paths inside of, this, uh, inside of this CSS path. If you're using an admin theme, there's some tokens down here that you can use to find like the CSS, but you, you know, if you're using an admin theme, uh, the WYSIWYG API does not like allow you to really detect in the admin theme where all that's going. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm, I, I made a sub-theme of Bartik, so I'm going back and getting the CSS out of Bartik, then getting my CSS out of my sub-theme as well. So it's kind of a, a bit of a long string, um, and one of those key pieces is having a dedicated WYSIWYG.CSS, um, and I'll show you the contents of as well, to try and like reset some of the, uh, the uh, styles that you may have um, on your um, theme because like maybe you eliminate your margin right on the body but um, and then you know your margin's gone and then your text is like right next to the edge of the editor. So uh, the other thing that uh, I do is I have a little module that um, loads some JavaScript which then applies, uh, dynamically applies the, uh, uh, some classes onto the, the WYSIWYG. So WYSIWYG, it loads in an iframe, right? And uh, so you've got like a bo two bodies on your page and then you try and put some stuff to correct it in, in your style sheets and it, it never seems to work properly and the cascading is like recursive. Um, so I'll show you that too. Um, I, I like CK Editor for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it's, you know, it's not too scary looking, um, and it's uh, highly accessible um, if, you're, if you work in, in the academic environment, which, which uh, I, I tend to do um, on occasion. Uh, that, that's usually a, a concern. Um, also, there's this great little feature uh, where you can you know, check a box and, uh, in the config, and it's uh, 
a little box that says force cleanup on standard paste, which basically um, strips out a bunch of the Microsoft cruft, um, and that's really awesome. Uh, and then the custom styles that I showed you earlier. And uh, last, of course, you should do it because everyone else is doing it too. Uh, so this is the, the CSS. So I, I always have this little WYSIWYG.CSS inside of my, um, uh, my theme. Now, I, I'm trying to push this into the, the modu little module itself uh, eventually. Um, but uh, you just reset the font size. And uh, these um, different body uh, classes are for D6 and D7. So the, the module um, works for, for uh, both. And uh, uh, resetting the font size to 1M because, you know, like I said, you have the body in the body. And so if you're then trying to apply some styles, you'll find that your sizing is inconsistent. Uh, I reset the background to white and uh, add a little bit of margin to make it more comfortable uh, during the editing experience. Uh, and then there's a little JavaScript file. And uh, all that does is it adds a class on that body, which is Node. I find that there are a lot of instances where uh, styles depend on or cascade down from Node. And uh, so um, you can actually get that, because it appears on the body of your, your, your Drupal site. If you inspect the HTML, you'll see that on the body there's a class of Node when you're um, on a Node. And that is not in the WYSIWYG editor, so you can't actually target any of your like node level H, H tags or specific uh, styles like that. All right, so, so that's, that's kind of the overview of how the text configuration works. Um, and now, no, I think you know, we'll talk a little bit about, about uh, image handling, which is, which is more complex. All right, so uh, media has changed quite a bit, um, and, but you know, like, it's not, it's, I don't know. In my, in my view, uh, media, it, it, it's not completely there yet. I think it's an extremely uh, promising uh, solution. Um, but I have one particular use case that uh, media does not uh, solve for me. Uh, for those of you that, uh, how many people are using media module currently in their implementations? OK. Um, so. Even on, on D7, I find like, that it doesn't allow me to decide where those images are going. And then uh, I can't, you know, the, my file system is all, is all a giant mess. And the only way to get to those images is then through the, you know, the media browser, which then you know, gives me everything. And I, don't know, I tried making my own views for that, and, and I kind of hit a bit of a wall. So I, I defaulted back to my D6 approach. Um, now, when thinking about media, I, I kind of, you know, imagine two different categories or, of, of files or images. You know, the first is, like, attachments. Um, typically, you know, you have posts and people want to attach, like, you know, PDF files or whatever. And, and then there's, there's images, which are, break down into two types. Like, there's um, fields, which generally uh, exist, you know, like, maybe you have a, a blog and a main image. And then there's the idea of, like, inline images, stuff that you want to paste anywhere for any reason. Um, so this is, this is kind of what, what I like to see, you know, in a, in a file strategy. Um, you know, your default files uh, directory is going to contain all kinds of uh, temporary cache files. So uh, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're, you're never putting your images directly in the root of your, uh, your image directory. You, so um, I, I have a folder called images, and then I usually break it down per content type, or you know sometimes per role. It, it depends, and uh, uh, transliteration and file field paths help with that. Um, so the the file field paths allows you on a per field basis to decide where you're going to put things, and um, uh, and that's you know fantastic. And then transliteration will allow you to rewrite the names of those uh, uh, images so that um, you know you can. You can translate them. You can get rid of. You can push everything to UTF, UTF-8, uh, or uh, sorry, uh, yeah, like just the the standard uh, ASCII character set, and, um, uh, and yeah, it's 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 fantastic. And then I use uh, IMCE to to go and browse and find those images instead of Media Module because it allows me granular permissioning. I can say, oh, you know, I want my like marketing department to go and only edit like be able to access this 
chunk of images and reuse those, but I don't want them to have access to, to anything else. And I only use it to browse files and then insert them into the body in combination with, um, you know, the, the, the insert module. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that, how all this, uh, how all this comes together. Uh, so uh, I, I have a demo site up, but um, um, I'll be providing some login information and set some like mm -hmm. kind of uh, demo site reset stuff so you guys can actually play around with it post con here. Uh, right. But for now. All right, so um, here's a little site, and uh, I have uh, a couple different um, content types in here. Um, I have an article and a page, and uh, a little you know list of views, a view of, of some of these articles here, and uh, and then there's uh, you know some text. So here is a cute little uh, block of text that you can see. Uh, has a whole bunch of test uh, HTML in it, and so you can like see how it renders out. And uh, I can't remember where I snagged this from. I think I got it from maybe uh, Andrew Barry, who got it from someone else. Um, there we go. So besides so just like that little flash there. Um, so you can see in in the editor, you know, it looks pretty much the same. And then uh, right now I'm logged in as uh, an administrator. And uh, so I have access to be able to you know, switch between text formats if I need to. Um, and if I check out the, uh, the basic test, this is using a filter. So it looks, it looks OK here. Uh, this is the little caveat here. Like, um, if you're using the um, WYSIWYG filter module, um, it applies post. So if you're filtering out particular like tags, uh, no, it's not going to really um, show you um, that they're going to get stripped out until you press save. For example, here, you know, you've got some preformatted text, and I'm not letting preformatted text get uh, that tag get rendered, it's getting stripped out, so you see it, it just kind of disappears. And I don't want tables to get uh, put in, so you know my tables are not formatted, it's, it's not in there at all. Um, so let's take a look at just kind of like the, a basic, basic article here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll switch uh, users for you after. All right, so here's a regular image, and this just goes up. Here's your body and some attachments. That's pretty standard. And then some inline images. So say, you know, I want to upload an inline image here, and then I want to insert it inside of my text, and I'm going to put it right here, you know. Uh, I come, and I I've got it, I just press insert. And I've got a couple styles that I can decide to you know, put them in as. Um, now, I'm just gonna go large. And so, you know, I, I, I like to live large. Oh no, bummer, live demos. All right, let's go look at an actual saved article. This one's already done and working. All right, so here's a couple examples of some images that have been inserted exactly like I just did now, except it actually worked. Um, 
And uh, this, this is the fantastic little thing about image resize filters. So you throw your images in, and then you, know, you can scale them, and it'll automatically generate using the image cache API a new, uh, a new image at the size that you've scaled it at. Uh, so you're not like, you can upload a really big image, put it in there, scale it down dynamically, and then uh, you know, you're, you're all good to go. Uh, just make sure when you're inserting it that you don't insert the image too small and, and, and try and make it bigger or else you'll get all, all the crusties. Um, so here's some of these styles. You can see like it's actually you know, rendering out and floating. And the format here is image right, which I've set up. Here I could choose uh, image left, go image right, floats over to the right. And uh, here, because this is a link, you know, it's got a little hover style. And you know, increasingly, I'm finding like for the uh, regular text editor that. I don't really even like to put the block level formats anymore. I just put these styles and it wraps it in the H tags anyways and then they don't even need to think about like HTML stuff or what is all this and then they need to do two different things. Make it an H tag and then apply a style. It, you know, it depends how much real estate you have. If you have like 400 like styles then maybe uh, it's not so much of a good idea but uh, for most use cases I find like that works pretty well. Um, cool. So, yeah. Um, let's see. How much time do we have? Two forty-four. All right. Um, maybe you know what I could show you is how all this configuration works inside of the WYSIWYG because that that's the uh, that's the great piece. So everything's under content authoring. You know, let's take a look at how we configure like our, let's go for like our basic text editor here. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm gonna let everyone use it and here are the filters that I have enabled. Uh, the WYSIWYG filter, uh, image resize filter. Uh, I, you know, it's a basic editor for, base, for normal people so I'll, I'll convert the URLs, sure, why not? and uh, correct some faulty HTML. Now you gotta throw the image resize filter uh, down there at the bottom or else it won't work. Um, that's in the documentation but I thought I'd mention it. And uh, the WYSIWYG filter you wanna run like kinda last because first if you have any kind of, um, I don't know, like you throw some media tags in there and, and they become like actual HTML tags, then you wanna run the filter after and maybe get rid of those if, uh, if you don't want them. Um, so here's how this WYSIWYG filter thing works. It's just a text box and you put some stuff in there according to the syntax. There's some links to the syntax tips. And, uh, and then you've got all these little boxes. This is kind of complicated. Like you might find you turn it on and then you can't do anything anymore. You have to on top of that decide like what you're gonna let in. So you go through and you check these boxes. Well this is in the Google Doc, you can take a look at it. Uh, you know I add a little, I, I let some borders get in there. I figure you know maybe why not. There's some borders and some lists, and definitely want lists. Um, so you might allow that, but allow people to create lists. But if you don't create that list button, it's gonna it's gonna be gone. Like what you really don't want to end up in a situation. You don't want to end up in the situation where you're like kind of giving up on it, and then you just let them choose full HTML. That's a disaster. But that's what most people end up doing, right? You you bear and you're like, oh, oh this isn't quite working. Oh, let's just let everyone use full HTML. And then the fun begins. Um, so here's uh, the class names that um, it's when I earlier when I was sh uh, showing you like that um, uh, up here where is it yeah way up here I'm letting some classes in um, down down here I need to define what they are so basically I strip out any class that isn't like pre-approved. And then there's some IDs. I mean, I guess you could put IDs in if you wanted to. Um, and then inline style stuff and some domains as well, like if you want to um, allow, uh, allow those to be included in your links uh, and be shown as relative. Um, oh, so image, res image resize filter is, you know, there isn't a, a, lot of, a, little, a lot of options there. Right. 
Um, so here, more rules, more buttons, more permissions, same classes. And I'll just show you the WYSIWYG profile stuff. Um, so here, here you've got like uh, editors that you assign to your um, text formats. And uh, once you do this, you can't really switch. So uh, you have to delete it in order to reassign another, um, uh, another uh, format. But you know, it's OK. It doesn't take too long to configure. Um, I, you know, I don't really uh, think you should put any kind of WYSIWYG profile on full HTML. Um, I mean, maybe if you use one of those things that, like, you know, it'll wrap some some stuff around it. But don't don't use a WYSIWYG on on that. I, you know, it, it just gets really confusing. So if you are showing full HTML, then you know you should see HTML, not something else. In my view, I don't know. Uh, so here we go. Lots of options. This is why it never ends up working, because you know there are all these options. Okay, so I disable this uh, enable disable rich text toggle link thing. Like, I just find with uh, CK Editor, uh, you don't you don't really need it, right? Because you come in here and you enable the source, and you can see the source. So like, why would you toggle it on and off? It's just an extra button, some extra UI. Um, then you got to put all, you choose all the buttons that you want to put up on there. You know you're free to to do to do whatever you like. Uh, I have some recommendations, and then you clean up everything, and then you need to put your CSS to correspond to the classes that you wanted to include. And it's really important that you also put the block level format here uh, just before it in this dot notation. Uh, this was like kind of contentious for a while. It wasn't really working. Um, and actually, in order to get the drop down to work, you do have to apply a patch to uh, WYSIWYG still, I think. I don't know if they've rolled it in there. But um. all right. So the last thing, maybe, uh, I'll show the IMCE stuff, because sometimes that's a bit of a mystery for people. Uh, I create like these configuration profiles. Well, everyone creates configuration profiles. There's some default ones. I get rid of, I get rid of uh, the, you know, I just have two for an administrator, and a contributor, and uh, I'll show you what like let's say what the contributor can do. So I limit you know what they can, uh, how much they can upload, and then you can set you know where they are allowed to browse to. So you, you know, let them go into the image images and then they can browse uh, and then there's also like contributor uploads maybe if they're uploading stuff uh, I toss that into um, a particular field so let's see what that looks like here if I wanted to use like maybe not on a page to go to like a post and you'll see how the insert thingy works so here's an article again test insert the article edit Right. So this is uh, file field sources. It allows you to use multiple sources for your images. You can upload one from your file system, which is fine. Uh, you can also use a remote URL uh, if you know that it's somewhere else on the net. Uh, you can reference an existing one if you know the actual name of the image, but most people don't. So this file browser, this is IMCE. And you click file browser, you go browse, and then you can see that only the images that I'm allowed to browse into show up. And here are my like article images. And you know, I can I can see them there, choose it, and then it reappears and I can then insert it into the body like I did later and earlier. Uh, and there we go. All right. Well that one worked. Cool. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. I don't know. Um, do you guys have any like particular sets of questions or problems that you're facing? Um, I don't know. Dramatic and contentious opinions about what I've just outlined for you. Um, there is a microphone for the benefit of the World Wide Web. If you'd like to stand up and toss your question in there, um, or I can 
you know, repeat it if uh, you don't want to get up. Um, so or, I, I noticed you're yeah. using the uh, WYSIWYG uh, module with the CK Editor library. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is different in Drupal 7, but in Drupal 6, you have the option of using the CK Editor module itself instead of the WYSIWYG module. Right. Do you have a, a preference or a reason? Um, well, there, there are a couple of reasons. One, one is that like with the, it's a bit harder to target particular text areas with the full module. So if you order the, um, I put it, you set your default format and then you gotta kind of exclude everything one by one with, with that, with the library. I'm sorry, I'm not articulating this so well. Um, basically, like, you can, you can set, set a baseline and then with better formats and you can target, you know, particular nodes in particular, particular areas. But uh, the other way around, you're, like, making this long list of all these different text areas you have to exclude the text editor on and you've got your edit forms and then you activate a module and then you got WYSIWYG on it and it's just like, bah. Um, the other thing is that you can, it's easier to add those, um, uh, uh, to use that, that the, there's some, um, met, some functions that will allow you to extend uh, CK editor more easily inside of your own module so you can add custom buttons uh, or you can, you know, add via a JavaScript a body class inside inside of there. Um, so that's yeah, that, that's that's those are the two main reasons. I would okay. Recommend it. Thank you. Um, and then also uh, for managing the file uploads and the images, have you thought about um, um, using like actual nodes for each image or file or whatever? I'm I'm in the process of designing my my um, content editor system right now and that was one option I was thinking about. Sure, I mean you can use, you know, node references and, and, and everything and, and if you use uh, file field paths, you're shoving your images in a specific place so you know where to retrieve them later on if you want to insert them into the body um, or you can use a, a, a node reference field in order to be able to, you know, connect those together on the, the node edit form. Um, uh, and that's that's fine too. You know, it, it depends what you want to do. If you want to, like, I find that's a, a particular use case where you have images in an image gallery, and then you want to reuse those inside of the body of your post, and you don't want to re-upload the same images. And um, so you can then permission things and put them, like, say you have a gallery, and you give it you give it the whole thing a name and slash galleries slash Christmas, and then you know that if you want to use the Christmas images, you can go browse in there and then put them inside of like your news article or whatever. Uh, yes, so I've had several situations where I have two different content editors, uh, one who's working with uh, basic formats and one who can do advanced formatting who's mm -hmm. a bit more experienced. Yeah. And in the case where somebody who with advanced formatting works on a page and sets up something like tables with advanced formatting and then the basic person goes to edit that page later, without that it seems like that formatting either gets stripped or they just can't access it at all. Is there any better way of handling that? No. <laughs> uh, so you, you kind of have two options. You can, you can either like let both uh, roles access both formats and then you use better formats to be able to like make the default different for each editor and the person of a lesser role gets the basic editor by default and or you make everyone have the basic one by default um, which I would recommend. Uh, it, go into advanced features when you need them and uh, keep it simple as much as possible, then, uh, you know, but, you know, sometimes if you, that, that can mitigate the possibility, right? So you start basic and then you do something advanced, like maybe you do want to lock people out at that point because you don't want them messing with it because it's, you know, outside of the realm of their abilities. It depends on your use case. So, you know, you, you can just decide which way to go. Thanks. Yeah. I have a two-part question. My first one is uh, there's the iTweaks upload that yeah. you mentioned or the, that's in the documentation. That, that only works on the Drupal 6 uploads, yeah. the attachments field, right? Right. Yeah. Not on the file field. Yeah. Um, it, it's mostly rolled into 7 uh, in terms of like what it does. Uh, Open Atrium uses it if you're familiar with that. Um, well, so I'm on Drupal 6, but... Mm -hmm. When you're in, you, in combination with the insert module where you can insert it 
Yeah. Uh, is there any any better way of managing it when you have multiple images? You have to keep adding like 10, 12 images, and then you have to scroll up the page right. to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's called theming, and you can like, <laughs> uh, you know, get, uh, actually, uh, if, if anyone had a chance to go to the uh, Open Academy talk, uh, or if you haven't, you know, download that. They've, they've done some really great things using panels to move um, some of those pieces inside of a, a, an interface so that, you know, you've got that on the side of the body, because I mean that body field's kind of wide anyways, right? So it's okay if we squash it a bit and we put our things next to it instead. Um, what I've done is like basically outline a, a structure for things and I'm like using, you know, Bardic here and, and, and default seven, um, but uh, you, can, you can then, you know, you can, you can jazz it up a little bit. Uh, and then the other thing you could do is, uh, I mean, if you were industrious, you could rewrite and, and make your own uh, image button and, and like craft a module to, to do that um, uh, and, and hook into all that stuff probably. Uh, I don't know, I haven't gone that far. Oh, oh, so oh, the one more thing is you can, the other thing you can do is use field groups and then in seven field groups will allow you to display things as tabs. So then you can get like kind of a tabbed interface the same way that you have the view and edit. And then I've done that a lot. So if you have multiple media and you know you have a whole bunch of images in a gallery or videos, then your form isn't so long and it's a little bit less imposing, plus it might be an edge case. Uh, the other opportunity that you have is to reference, uh, reference things uh, to take that out of the node itself. Sorry. Uh, so I have a content type uh, with an image field that stores the images in the private file system, uh, and I can't yeah. get the IMCE browser to right. uh, look at that. Am I missing something obvious, or is that a limitation of the IMCE browser? You're missing something, but it's not obvious. There's a checkbox somewhere. Okay. Um, and it, it's a little checkbox, and it says, you know, allow IMCE to browse inside of the, file, uh, the private file system. Um, I, I think I remember that, and it says something about... Um, if you do that, then it's yeah. not uh, applying the same permissions to right. limit who can see those, which is the point of having it in the private file system. Is that, I don't know if I'm misunderstanding that, or, but if I do that, am I really exposing that to everyone without authentication? Uh, the, it's, yeah, it's like somewhat dangerous, I guess. So yeah. well, it's at just that point, if you use private site, files, so. maybe um, you know, don't use the IMCE browser if you're concerned about that. Security, which probably should be. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, you mentioned the image resize filter as a way to sort of create ad hoc image cache presets from the size that a user specifies for the image when they insert it. Yeah. In line, is there sort of a way to do the opposite and allow users only to choose from some predefined image cache presets for those inline images to sort of keep a uh, and that, that comes from image cache? Uh, yeah, so those are, the, those are like image cache or the image styles in Drupal 7. And then uh, uh, there you go. Or, you know, they can use, uh, they can use uh, Chrome and then they won't be able to drag and move those, resize those images because it's kind of busted in Chrome. At least it was last time I checked. Um. Do you have an opinion about using the image picker module as an alternative to uh, IMCE and insert? No. If, if you have something to share about it, uh, please, please do if, you're, if you want to advocate uh, it, for it. it. It basically gives you the browsing that IMCE gives you uh, right there on the node edit screen uh, in, a, in a paged format so you can tab through and see thumbnails. And mm -hmm. you're basically just looking at your repository of images. You can click on them mm -hmm. and insert them uh, just the way insert does. OK. Cool. Check it out. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the talk. Um, I've uh, I'm I've been through a lot of the very same process and actually landed on using a lot of these very same tools um, in my own workflow. Mm -hmm. And one thing that um, I'd really like to be able to do, and I'm I'm curious whether you have a a good solution, is like wrap all of this configuration that we've just talked about into something that's exportable or you know that you can easily use across sites like with features module or something like that. I have candy for you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I've created a distribution which wraps basically the demo site up and uh, still working on it a bit because uh, 
It's kind of tough, this stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, and in order for the features to work, there's like a certain combination of patches that you need to apply to things. So what the distro does is uh, there's a make file and uh, it'll build uh, it'll build the whole stack for you. Uh, and now uh, D.O will allow, I hear, external libraries. So uh, I'm going to look to packaging it up on there so you can just download a tarball, um, which is a lot uh, more straightforward. Um, there's a simple installation profile, which will create some content types and all this. And the, um, so I, I do have in, in there a module, which is uh, a, a WYSIWYG feature, and it encapsulates uh, this stuff. But for, for it to work, you have to pair um, you have to pair permissioning with it. So uh, I've decoupled that with two features, one which is a WYSIWYG feature, and then there's another one that just has the permissions in it, so you can like alter that if you have different roles uh, on your site. And uh, there's also the sub-theme that includes um, the CSS and, the, and then the custom module that has the, the JavaScript stuff. So you can just, uh, you know, you just make that. Uh, then you know you can go in there and you can build it with uh, site install if you're industrious, and if not, then you can uh, you know wait to um, download the tarball. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. It. All right. So. You know. Just a, a couple comments. Uh, like you, we were kind of disappointed in the media module when it came out, and that. It just put things wherever it wanted, and we couldn't, yeah. as far as have any folder management from the user's level, right? And the ability to move items around, it was kind of a letdown. You know, we were looking forward to that. We use CK mm -hmm. Finder, and have found it to to meet our needs. Um, I, I do like the idea that you know IMCE does allow you to do some roles, you know, some permissions down to the roles. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever messed That's around with CK Finder. I assume you have, but have you ever seen anywhere that you can assign roles with CK Finder? Or uh, I, I'm not really aware of that module, um, but you know, the like you say, the reason I, I like IMCE is is particularly for the ability to permission it permission uh, across multiple roles. Like All right, thank you. I'll, I'll look into that. Thanks. Afternoon. Um, my users love Microsoft Word a lot, and they love to paste directly from Microsoft Word into yeah. the WYSIWYG editor, and it always fails, be it Tiny MC or CK editor. Um, no matter how much stripping I set it to do, is do you know of any workarounds or solutions for that sort of thing? Yeah, so that that uh, WYSIWYG filter is is what what you want to invest some time into because uh, there's there really isn't much that will you know, strip out the standard uh, paste checkbox. Like it does, it does a pretty good job. But what you can do is educate them a little bit and have them not necessarily leave Word. I think Word uh, from 2007 or 8 onwards has a feature when you go in their file menu, export for web, and it actually does a pretty good job of translating like things into H tags and lists into actual HTML and getting rid of a lot of that cruft. So I, I'd encourage that workflow. Um, you know, you can always do the thing where you cut and paste into Notepad. Uh, a lot of people do that um, to, to make sure to get rid of things. And um, I mean, it, it's just nicer to have like a, your database be slimmer because you know, it's, all, it's all extra code and then your revisions table builds up. And um, if you can get your, your, your input to be cleaner, you don't have to deal so much with the, the output. But to be safe, you just want to make sure that you're going to be uh, you know, challenging that, uh, that input with some, like, some, some, strict, some strict rules there. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, he was just mentioning the paste from Word button in CK Editor, but I found that it never really quite did the job. I think that correcting the behavior is probably the thing to do, but I work for nonprofits as well, so I know how difficult that is. Oh, 
it's a good way of training them. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if, if, if people can uh, try and come up, come up to the, the mic with responses, I mean, I, I would repeat what, what you said for the benefit of everyone, but I, I couldn't even, even hear it. Um, can you speak to the balance between training editors versus spending a lot of time setting up a, a, a WYSIWYG editor? Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Uh, I, you know, you, you, user error is, is frequent and it, it might be a mistake, you know, it might be you. So you do on the back need to definitely make sure that you, you lock things down and you prepare against eventualities. But training is, is important. I mean, not only does it help you build better relationships with, uh, with your clients and, and, and make them, you know, feel comfortable and, and, and cared for, but, um, you know, it can save them time and uh, it, can, it can make sure that your, your database is, is, is nice and, and slim. Um, so, do you have a, some, a more specific query? Well, I, I guess I have one particular editor who is a constant... Um, Troublemaker? Uh, have constant issues with, with mainly with pasting from Word. Yeah. And um, the rest of my editors are great. And, and so right. on one hand, it's almost, yeah. it's almost um, easier to... Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what to do with this one person, whether, whether, whether I have an editor mm -hmm. that, or someone with a higher permission that right. goes in and cleans things up, or whether does, I... Does that person have a boss? Yes. <laughs> Talk to the boss. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, what we've found is, uh, that's been really helpful for us, is what we do is we, we start them out with the WYSIWYG editor toggled off. Have them paste it in, nothing stays from Word then. They toggle it on and then they do their editing. If they do what this gentleman just said and they can do it consistently, they get plain text only. Or they get the permissions taken away. And actually we've had like 100% compliance since then. So it's really helped us a lot with that. Uh, to me the strip out the uh, force force cleanup on paste never yeah. works. So. Yeah, it, it's not it's not 100% uh, there, but you know, it helps. And it, yeah, I, I totally agree. User behavior is the easiest, uh, well, not the easiest, but the most effective solution. Hey, I'm uh, Willie Kay from New York. A quick question is, well, I found that the recipe sort of that you talked about and a few folks talked about for images in WYSIWYG or, or yeah. media tends to work pretty well with sort of a moderate amount of images, but I find when on sites that have lots, like thousands and thousands of images, it, it's sort of tough as far as an interface goes and it generally sort of ended up rolling something else with views and a couple other solutions. But how do you, how have you, what's your experience been with sort of large volumes of images and would you do a different recipe? So when you, you when you say that you have issues with the, the large volume, is it is it browsing and finding things? Yeah, or? It's, it's sort of the user experience right. in terms of navigating. Just sure, yeah, images, that's, right? that's and where... It's a bit sluggish and stuff. That's where IMCE, I think, is, is, is good um, and, and where file field paths really comes in and yeah. you can, uh, you know, segment. And you can use tokens, too, so that, you know, uh, chances are you have larger groups, you have galleries, and those galleries have names or node IDs, and then you can have some, you know, some folders that you can, you know, chuck some stuff into. You can use dates as well. Um, so, you know, top level. It, it's like, uh, I don't know, uh, it's like your file system, right? Think about how, how, how would you like it to be, to be browsable, and then I'm sure you can refactor that into um, a pattern that will apply a, you, across you your site. You found that sort of approach workable, I guess. Sorry? And you found that approach workable? Yeah, I found that approach workable. Um, just but, just you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about, like, necessarily running a whole image-based, like, I don't know, like, a million images yeah. uh, on your site. Like, then, then yeah, that, 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 that kind of breaks down. But then you have a different kind of site, and you're not really talking about, like, content so much. And you, you, you need to reconsider, like, how you're dealing with all of your, your media uh, you know, as a, as a completely different strategy than like inserting or, you know, as, um, 
you might want to have a more programmatic uh, uh, solution at that point, okay. maybe. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, well, you know, uh, we're out-ish of time. Uh, I would invite anyone uh, who's interested to continue this conversation to be uh, in touch with me, and if you have any particular interest in, uh, you know, working on uh, technology for uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement, certainly I'd like to, to chat with you. Um, we're always looking for um, more people to work for free. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that's the cost of freedom, right? Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your time here.